<clears throat> so one question I think I've got more than any other one in the world is, will doing abdominal exercises fix diastasis recti permanently? It's a really tough question for me to answer because I honestly do not know the answer for sure. But to be perfectly honest, I don't think most of the medical community knows the answer, answer either. Uh, but I will do my best to give you guys a firm answer here. Uh, first off, please subscribe to Riley Rehab if you haven't already. I come up with new content like this completely for free, helping you become the expert of your own body. Uh, and I touch on things like this, injuries. Uh, specifically, diastasis recti has been one that I've been talking about a lot. Uh, for those of you who have seen my videos before, I'm, I'm a big fan of doing abdominal exercises to work on this. Uh, I, I'm always careful to say, to not say that it'll fix it per se, because it's hard to guarantee that. But I do believe that by doing it, you will be able to build the strength and protect yourself, making sure nothing terrible happens in the future. Uh, but let's get to this because I call it the million dollar question. It's one of those things I, I would love to have a firm answer on in the future. I know right now it seems a little up in the air. Uh, but let's talk about what the research says. And really quick, just for those of you who don't know what diastasis recti is, basically your rectus abdominis, um, your six pack aka, in the middle you have this little space there or this little line of soft tissue. And for whatever reason, it could be from pregnancy, it could be from uh, a trauma, it could be from surgery, the, the distance will separate between the inside right here. And uh, in some cases, this can get severe enough that it does become a hernia and it does become a more medical problem. Uh, but in, in the majority of cases, it becomes more of a cosmetic issue and more, more of one of those things where you kind of want to keep a close eye on it, but it's not necessarily a bad uh, not necessarily the end of the world. Uh, but anyways, get, just getting back to that, most, uh, most of the research they do on this is performed on, on women, specifically ones who just had a baby in the last 12 months. Uh, big reason for that is that's the majority of the people that go through this issue, and uh, it would only make sense to study those. Now what most researchers measure uh, to determine whether there's an improvement in it from doing exercise is the interrecti distance, which basically means the distance between the gap or the width of the gap that you have in your abs. Uh, and in general, just to give you guys a short answer, uh, many studies found abdominal exercises would decrease this interrecti distance, this IRD, uh, in women. But the only downside with that, though, is it was done in women zero to one years postpartum. So meaning they had a baby about a year ago or less. Uh, so that does blur the study a little bit if you're not in that population. Uh, I want to also talk about what's known about postpartum women um, as far as what they go through. So in, in general, the first six months, especially the first two months after you have a baby, it's been well documented that the IRD or the width of your gap will decrease naturally. Uh, not, not necessarily entirely decrease, but a lot of the time you will see like, basically improvements in that. And it's believed to be due to hormonal changes. Uh, it's well known that in, when you're pregnant, uh, all the soft tissues in your body, meaning all your muscles, ligaments, connective tissue, what have you, they all get looser. And it makes sense because how on earth would you have a baby otherwise if you weren't able to get that loose? But the, the thing is that when you're on the other end, you don't want to stay that loose. So your body's naturally going to try to bring everything back together uh, and tighten everything up. And part of that, uh, what that'll do is that'll actually cause you to uh, close up the gap there if you are a lady who's just had a baby. So a lot of the time when they do research, they, they'll, they'll find improvements during that time. Uh, but it's, it's always hard to tell, is this coming from exercise, is it coming from hormonal changes? And what I would say, what, what it's, what's been pretty well established is it doesn't require exercise in order to make it close during that time. But there is evidence, there is some evidence from studies that you can decrease it further by exercising. But then this leaves back to the million dollar question, what about the guys? Uh, and, and I could also say beyond guys, I could also say girls who haven't had kids before or um, any, anybody who had this from a traumatic reason. It, it, it's another story. It's, it's harder to say because you don't have those things going on. 
And uh, to add on to that, there is very little research, unfortunately, covering exercise. I haven't even found much on exercise to deal with people who have hernias. It's, it's one of those things that, unfortunately, we can't find much for. And this is why one thing that I propose uh, is for, for any of my viewers out there or any of my viewers who know people with this condition, I'd highly recommend that if you're, if you're not too shy, uh, to share your story on, on the comments section below. Just let me know uh, how, how you're doing, if you've been doing exercises for the abs for a while, if you've been following some of my stuff. And, uh, and be completely honest as to whether it did or didn't work. I, I'd actually be curious specifically for the did it work to actually close the gap or not, because I know that is one of those hot questions that is very difficult to answer. And uh, yeah, please be honest, I, I think this could actually work a little bit as a little mini research study just to give us some, some light where there is none, or some information where there is none, rather. Anyways, uh, let's get back to the data here. So there, there was another, basically a systematic review is a study of studies. So it basically means they take all the best studies, they look at them, and they, they say, does this treatment X, does this work or not? Uh, so there were two big studies, one of them on diastasis recti, one of them was for just specifically pregnant women and I didn't want to touch on that too much. But this one is actually probably the most relatable one that I could find to uh, the population that is people like myself. And uh, that one basically goes into all the treatments that are commonly done for diastasis recti. And what they did, they did look at some surgeries, uh, or sorry, they, they, they looked at multiple studies regarding the exercise therapy effects for one, and physiotherapy two. Uh, they also looked at surgery and a couple types and the effectiveness there. Uh, really interesting read if you do want to read into the surgery side. Uh, for me, I'm, I'm a physiotherapist by trade, I'm not a surgeon, so I don't feel comfortable going really in depth with the nitty gritty in the surgery. But it is definitely something that's worth reading, especially if you are one of those people who is considering going in that direction. Anyways, long and short of that study, the bottom line is they, they did find some things with surgery that I'm not going to talk about, but with physio, they found that it did reduce the IRD, that's the width between the abs, uh, but there were no reports of complete resolution, and there were no measurements or, of changes in the resting IRD. Now, that, that's something... I'll save, I can save that for another video, but they're basically saying that they measured people the, the way you typically would measure your gap, or if you kind of looked up and then you tried to stick fingers in your tummy. Uh, I'll make a video on that another time, just so you guys uh, can, I can make that clear. Anyways, so what I got from this is, in general, there are improvements, but it doesn't seem, from, what the, from the data they have there, which I will say is quite limited, they, they don't have enough convincing evidence to say that for sure it'll work. Uh, now, but the one thing I want to do is I want to dive deeper into the data here to actually show you guys every little thing that goes on uh, to the best of my abilities because I, I think it's so easy to just look at the general conclusion of things and just immediately jump to conclusions in your head. Uh, but in reality, when you look at the studies, that'll give us a better picture of what, what could be done uh, and whether it's possible. So there were four major studies they took from this. Uh, one of the studies, so this one, they, they looked at, they split nine women into two groups. And basically, the, the women here I want to mention too, three months to three years postpartum. That's kind of important because it does go a little out of that two month window where it is a little later on and there is some potential that it's not quite as much just like the natural body's rebound going on and it actually could be from exercise. Uh, both groups performed a bunch of abdominal exercises, posterior pelvic tilts, kegels, uh, Russian twist while bracing. Uh, but the one big thing they compared was one group doing crunches and another group doing planks. And what they found from this is from six weeks of this, they basically saw uh, decreases in both groups. So the IRD decreased at the level of the belly button. And for this, in, in six weeks, they noticed a five millimeter change in the crunch group. So, meaning they got five millimeters thinner, that's about a half of the finger width. Uh, and in the plank group, they got one millimeter thinner, which is a pretty small number over six weeks when you think about it, but it, it is still something in the right direction, which I found interesting. So this, this one kind of gives some hope to say that 
that there, there is a chance that you can create some improvements to this as far as it changing permanently. But I will say that when you look at the numbers, such as five millimeters in six weeks, uh, it's it's not necessarily as it's not necessarily going to be a miraculous overnight fix. Uh, even five millimeters sounds like a pretty uh, pretty high number there already. <coughs> but but just just to fill you guys in, this is something that they did show, and it gives a bit of an idea. Then here's uh, the second study. Uh, th this, this one is actually probably my favorite one so far. Unfortunately, the result was not uh, really, it didn't really give you much information, but they, they took a large amount of people. They basically took 87 women and two men, uh, and they put them into three groups. Surgery it was one, two was surgery, and then the third one was a three-month training program with a physiotherapist. And the one thing I want to mention with this that's really important is to be included in the study, they had to have wanted abdominal wall reconstruction. How, how I picture it is these are people that were already coming in to go see the surgeon. They were already ready to, to just get surgery, and then they kind of got roped into the study where next, next thing you know, they're doing the training group, at least a third of them is. So the, the one thing, and I think this is, even the uh, authors would admit to this, that, that kind of did unwind their study from the training group perspective is, in the training group, basically, when, you're, when they were about three months in, 26 of the 32 were so dissatisfied uh, with their discomfort and continued bulging of the abdominal wall uh, that they were all offered to receive an operation because of the ethics board. And, and that kind of makes sense from an ethical standpoint, because if you were really waiting in line a long time for a surgery and then last minute they're like, oh, we're going to pair you up and get you doing exercise with a physio, uh, I, I can see if your mind's already set on surgery that they, that, that would be something where you may want to just get in quicker. So I, I do understand that, but it, it did make it a little difficult to really confirm because they found they did that for three months, but uh, they didn't really commit to it all the way. They kind of just went into the surgical route there. But a couple important points I, I want to mention, though, is that the training group performed uh, basically abdominal exercises. They didn't specify them on this, so it's kind of hard to say. But they, for layman's terms, they worked on all the abdominal muscles. And their, their abdominal strength and pain actually improved as a result. So when they did look at it, they were seeing some improvements. Uh, they didn't mention improvements necessarily on the topic of uh, the gap closing. But it was interesting to see that there was still a decent benefit with that. However, uh, this study, well, while it did sound good, I was thinking like, oh man, this is awesome. They actually got a study with a couple of men in it. Uh, well, while it did sound good uh, at first, uh, unfortunately, it, it didn't really work out as planned, just, just because humans do what humans do, and uh, you can't really blame them for that. But if there is a couple points that I want to take from this, uh, no, number one, it, it does kind of suggest to me that if, if exercise really can fix diastasis recti, meaning it can actually close the gap, it, it'll most likely take longer than three months uh, based, based on what I've seen. I, I think this really reflects a lot of what you might see if, you, uh, if, if somebody were to come into my clinic asking me to help fix them. And, uh, the other thing, too, is when, when your mind is already set on surgery, that, that's often the, the point when you lose your motivation to really commit all the way to exercises. Not all the time, but you, you do see that sometimes, because then you're thinking, like, well, why am I worrying about fixing myself if I can just get someone else to fix me? Uh, so, so those all kind of got in the way there. It, it would have been interesting if they actually had one where instead of people being in line for surgery, they, they were purely just going off and doing exercise and believing in it all the way. Uh, but nonetheless, it does shed some light on what's actually going on. And uh, there, there were two, so there were other case studies in this. I didn't want to mention case studies because case studies are just single people. Uh, and it, I, I don't trust them all the way. Uh, but I did want to touch on the two other major studies that they did mention here as far as physiotherapy or exercise uh, for diastasis recti. Uh, the re these two aren't quite as important to me because they're more talking about women that have freshly given birth, we could say. Uh, but I do want to touch on them because at least it gives you an idea of what, what can be done. 
In this study here, they took 30 women immediately after childbirth. Uh, I believe they started the program right away after, but I couldn't confirm that. Uh, they had women doing a head lift, a pelvic lock, plank, superman, and double leg raise. And they had them doing these exercises five times a week for eight weeks. And when you look at it this way, they, they basically had a three millimeter decrease above and below the belly button. So when you look at, when you do the math on that, that's three millimeters in eight weeks. Once again, like what I was talking about in the other one, not not a massive change, not, not a really quick fix, but still something. And you never know, if, if they were to have continued that for another year, perhaps it could be more. But the unfortunate thing with a lot of these science studies is they can't keep them going forever, and they do eventually have to kind of call them off. So it, it makes it harder to kind of see in the long term, especially with exercise. You see that sometimes that they usually go 16 weeks at the most. Uh, one, one other point I want to want to mention with this though, because it is important, they didn't have a control group in this, so it's hard to tell how much of this was just from the natural process of uh, things tightening up and how much was actually from the exercise. And the last one, pretty similar in this case, uh, they took 30 women uh, immediately after having a kid. Uh, only, the only interesting thing with this is by having them exercise for two weeks, they, they decreased the distance by a whole finger width. So if you imagine you could fit two fingers in your abs in, in that gap, they ended up bringing that down to one finger, which to me was pretty uh, interesting because that, that, that's a massive difference. Now, one thing I will say with that, though, is that is pretty early on. Once again, same, same kind of things as that other study. It's uh, that they, they got them early on, and they didn't have a control group, so it's hard to compare to how it would have been. But it is still interesting to see that they did have, that they were able to see that. So just to conclude, this, based on everything that I've read, uh, this, I, I'm barely scratching the surface with what I showed you guys so far, but I, I've read a lot into this. And I want to give you my educated opinion. Uh, based, based on what I've seen, I would not put any money to say that you would make it go away completely in three months by doing exercise alone. I, I'm still a huge believer in getting it strong. I still think, like what I've said in my videos before, that a lot of people really baby themselves too much when they should be doing harder ab exercises to train themselves. But it's not, it, it's hard to guarantee that exercise is going to magically just fix it. Uh, and, and this is something, there, there, are, there is a lot of people out there marketing quick fix solutions to this, and I would say beware of it because it's, it's really, I have not seen enough in, in my life to really confirm. Uh, unless unless you, a baby just came out of you yesterday, it's pretty hard to guarantee a quick result. But that being said, there, there is still a potential that there could be small gradual results over a long period of time. Uh, I, I'm mentioning here that they did have that one study where they said five millimeters in six weeks, which I thought was pretty interesting. They, they found that is a pretty interesting change there. And even if it was one millimeter, I, I still wonder if, if you exercise for a long enough period of time, could you eventually make that gap close? And that's something I'd be really curious to hear if, if any of my viewers have had an experience like this. Please let me know. Let me know in the comment section here. Uh, I, I will say with myself, I have not noticed uh, a strong enough decrease to really make it uh, noticeable to me. I kind of went in not expecting it to decrease immediately. But that being said, I'm regularly doing ab exercises all the time, and I, I do feel that in, in a few years it might be a different answer. So I want to I keep people's, uh, people's hopes up a little bit, but I also don't want to bring them up too high because it is, it is one of those things where it doesn't seem to be a quick fix, and that, that's why I understand some people do prefer to go the surgical route. And uh, the other thing too, crunches may be better than planks based on one of the research articles. Uh, mind you, this was a small sample size, so it's hard to really guarantee that crunches are the best. For me, I'm a fan of most ab exercises. I, I, I think as long as it isn't too hard for you to do, then you can easily get away with it. Uh, but, but here's the one thing I want to have you guys focus on. Learning how to brace, learning how to basically keep everything tight in there can help control the bulging in the long term. And to me, I see a ton of value in that. That's why I really am a big fan of doing these kind of exercises all the time. 
because I do feel that the more you do it, number one, you get a lot better control of, of everything in there. But number two, it will help with the strength in a lot of ways as well, because then when you do actually have to do something strenuous, uh, the risk of something tearing and getting worse is a lot lower. And uh, the other thing I'll, I want to mention too is the research, di the research from everything that I spoke of earlier, they, they did mention in them complications from surgeries, but I never saw one time when they mentioned that there was a complication from people doing exercise or physiotherapy. Now that's not to say that it couldn't ever happen, but I, I really do, I, I, I see so much junk out there, I could say, it, where, where people basically say that you should never do this exercise or never do this exercise if you have diastasis recti. Uh, but at the same time, I haven't seen enough to really prove that that could happen. If, if you do one sit-up, that it would just magically just make your six-pack rip in half or something like that. I'm, I'm not afraid of exercise, and I don't think you should be either. I really think that in the majority of cases, it's safe to do just about any ab exercise as long as you're at the strength level to perform it. Uh, and also realize there is a risk to surgery, so it's completely up to you, between you and your doctor, if you want to go that route. Uh, I do understand that if you do realize it's not fixing quick enough and it's a really big deal for you that it is fixed, then it, it, it does make sense to have a chat with your doctor and then see. But you've got to make sure you don't ignore that the abdo doing abdominal exercises can strengthen the linea alba. And that, that will reduce your risk of further injuries. And the, the more you kind of put pressure on this, the more you kind of stretch it and load it by doing exercises, the more stronger it'll get in response. And th this is something I really strongly believe in. And that, that's why I don't like to tell people to throw, throw it out of exercises entirely, because I really think there's value in making this stronger. In fact, just give me a sec here. In fact, I could see that reducing further injury in the future. So th this, this kind of leads me to one final thing that I want to say, because my, my original message was mostly focused on getting strong. It's exactly like that. Uh, if you don't work on your abdominals, you could run into this little spiral that I've seen some people get into. And that one is kind of similar to what I've seen sometimes where people who have, uh, for example, take knee arthritis. If, if your knees start getting worn down, you go see the doctor, they x-ray you, they say you have knee arthritis. It's common sometimes for people to overdo it, or let's say underdo it, on doing things to bend their knee. They, they realize their knee's kind of breaking, and they want to do everything they possibly can to basically preserve the, the use of their knees. So they'll avoid going for runs, which may be a good idea, but then they even, might even take it further, where they won't go to the gym anymore, they might not go for long walks anymore, they, 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 they'll just avoid, avoid. They, they may avoid doing lunges at home, they may avoid doing any kind of exercise. And while in little bits that's okay, when, when it gets to a point that's high enough, even though they, their reason, even though they were doing it to try to avoid risk of damaging their knee further, they actually create more risks because by not doing any activity, by not bending the knee, the muscles around it get weaker. And on top of that, uh, their weight may go up as well. So if, if you get these people that have just been inactive for a long time because of arthritis, just to protect their knee, uh, next thing you know, their muscles get weaker and they get heavier, and what do you think that's going to do to their knees? It, it's exactly, it's going to do exactly what you think. It's going to make the knees wear down even more. So I've seen that spiral happen with some people, and th this isn't just knee arthritis. This is with just about every injury. And I really don't like to see this happen with something like diastasis recti, especially if you are one of those minor cases. Because I do see a lot of stuff out there on social media and the internet where they really do kind of put the fear of God in you from doing any kind of ab exercise. They, they tell you never to do a sit-up ever again, even though every time you get out of bed you have to do a sit-up. And uh, they, they tell some really extreme advice. And th this was really something I kind of fell into even as a trained professional. I, I started reading all this stuff when I found it first got it and I was like, holy crap, like, how am I going to even be able to exercise my abs ever again? And, and I can tell you guys right now, one, like almost a year of doing this, I, I haven't noticed. I, I've, I've done every ab exercise in the book, and so far I haven't noticed anything getting worse. So not to say that everybody watching this should do every ab exercise in the book, but I, I will say that there is kind of a bit of fear that gets pushed here, and I don't want you guys to fall into that cycle where you, you stop working on your abs and your abs get weaker, and then you create an injury for yourself in the long run, because when you finally do have to 
go under and fix your car or like get out of bed or do do some kind of movement, it actually does pull something and make it worse. So my message is pretty much the same. I, I hope this really helped you guys kind of have better information as far as whether, whether this can actually fix the diastasis recti. I really hope that we find out it does, but I will say if it does, it will be a slow road and it will likely take longer than three months. So I hope you liked the video. Please subscribe to Riley Rehab because I put tons of effort into these videos. I'm going to be putting even more effort on these. Any injury topic you have, I'm going to answer your questions. I'm going to do my best to help you become the expert of your own body.